The many impacts of COVID-19 on rural communities has recently become a topic of conversation as areas across the United States are reporting higher COVID fatalities, infections, and quarantines. Due to this, some healthcare experts have considered the virus more deadly in rural areas. However, River Hospital CEO Emily Mastler said that there are many factors that contribute to the dangers of COVID-19 and rural communities and vulnerabilities individuals may face. She said a patient's physical distance to health care access plays one of the largest roles when it comes to vulnerabilities in rural settings. Um, when we're dealing with rural health care, generally, um, access to care is, is, is the most important thing that we focus on. And so in rural health care, um, limited access to health care becomes the factor that you know, makes or contributes to um, vulnerabilities or healthcare vulnerabilities in our communities. Additional factors that can determine a patient's vulnerability also includes underlying health conditions. She said that the rise in chronic health conditions such as respiratory issues is something they have been watching in the North Country. Because of um, limited resources, you know, we do see increases in um, other chronic health conditions. You know, we're seeing increases in uh, car cardiac conditions or diabetes or um, respiratory illness or pulmonology. As a leader of one of the country's top critical access hospitals, Mastler said that throughout the pandemic, ensuring health care close to home has been the facility's top priority. Critical access hospitals are effectively designated to serve um, underserved areas in rural environments. And so we exist, our existence is, is to ensure access to exceptional health care close to home. We work a lot with other hospitals, other health care systems, um, other partners to, to really make sure that as we're seeing increases in health care demand, not just because of COVID, but it could be because of a number of different things that are going on in our community, that um, we have a, a seamless and rapid response to, uh, to the best of our ability to get folks what they need. But moving forward, she said it's hard to know what the next couple months will look like in the North Country. She said COVID rates may depend on vaccination rates and the community's ability to stabilize a potential surge. I think that um, so much will depend on, uh, you know, where we are with the vaccine initiatives, you know, where how things move forward with the vaccine. Um, we're, we're waiting to see how the, the most recent, um, I would call it surge or wave that we saw sort of as the summer was ending um, and the fall was beginning, whether or not that's going to continue to, it looks as though we're seeing a little bit of a, um, a decline, but it's hard to know what will ultimately happen as we're heading into the holidays. And like the North Country has seen previously, spikes in rural communities do not always match up with spikes happening in major metropolitan areas. Masler said that this is why rural health care systems need to be prepared like they have in the past. Regardless of whether or not, you know, we're seeing a higher, um, at this present time, a higher reaction or prevalence in rural America versus urban, um, I think what we really have to be focusing on as a whole is making sure that our healthcare systems have the resources that they need to serve the people that need them when they need their healthcare resources in a timely fashion without um, barrier or delay. We're just going to have to stay, we're just going to have to be really careful. Um, and then in the long term, hopefully we continue to to strengthen our healthcare responses and systems to to make to, to be able to take care of people even when in, in our most challenging times. For ABC 50 Now in Watertown, I'm Isabella Colello.